CataractCoach.com. Dislocated IOL and bag with pseudo exfoliation. This is late bag and IOL dislocation because of the progressive pseudo exfoliation. Now, look at this. Wow, there is no zonion support left. You can see that fibros caps are bag with the IOL in it. Looks like a single piece lens. Surgeon's grabbing onto it and trying to get it up. You got to certainly have to explant this lens, but look at that. Wow, the whole psalm rings ring. You've got the whole caps or bag plus the IOL. The whole thing. Now, good thing you're bringing it up now. If you did nothing, Eventually, this whole thing would drop into the vitreous cavity. Now, that is, wow, look at that. How would you explant this? Now, would you cut it in half? Would you do a um, twisting out technique? Let's see what the surgeon's going to do here. Looks like a condom will have a pritomy, pretty large pritomy, and now making a groove here, half skull depth groove. All right, perhaps going to be a wide incision, so taking the lens out whole. So there you go. I like a scleral tunnel. That's always going to seal up really nicely. Great long-term stability there. That's a pretty wide scleral tunnel. You only have to make it about six and a half. And those look like scissors. Okay. Are we cutting something? Oh, a little bit of Irish prolapse there. And so, oh, yeah, cut it in half. Look at that. So cutting through the bag and the IOL. I like the use of the chopper in the second hand to kind of help fixate things. And let's see, a little bit of Irish prolapse. That's okay. And it looks like the lens was cut mostly through, but not all the way, which makes it easier to, again, remove part like this and then rotate it out, keep them connected. I like that idea, too. Instead of having two complete halves, cut the, down the middle, but only about 80 90% of the way through. Rotating it out, look at that, gone now. Okay, suturing this closed. And you're going to need to clean this up. There's obviously going to be some vitreous prolapse as well. Remember, check out our Cataract Coach podcast. You know, it's the top podcast in all of ophthalmology for a reason. We teach you the secrets to being a better, more successful surgeon. Now, that incision was sutured up. Now, oh, a pars plane of vitrectomy. Very nice. This is helpful, especially if you want to learn retina. Guess what we have? Retina, Retinarounds.com. You got to check it out. Now, looking over here, let's see. We've got marks probably for placing a Yamane-style fixation. So two millimeters from the limbus and then two millimeters uh, uh, to the side, getting a nice long two millimeter tunnel there. I like that. And now entering inside the eye. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. And this is a very nice technique here. And so now with that larger incision, it's going to be a lot easier to place the lens. So look at that. You can even externalize the guiding needle, the hollow bore needle, through the main incision. Look how easy it is now to thread that haptic through there, much, much easier. Get that haptic threaded through there. And done, and done outside the eye, a little bit off our screen here, that's okay. Now pulling it back inside the eye. And because you have the larger incision, you don't have to worry about folding the lens or anything. You just get it right in there. Maybe take out one more of those sutures. Or maybe it'll fit. Let's see, a little bit of go, will it go, will it go? It does go, all right, very nice. And now you could probably do the same technique for the other one. So get that optic in there. I like that this is a vitreoretinal surgeon who's doing a complete part plane of vitrectomy, or at least certainly cleaning up the antivitreous very nicely. Now, the other needle going in the opposite side, again, a two millimeter tunnel in the sclera. That's two millimeters posterior to the limbus, now entering the eye. And yeah, you can also externalize that needle. It's a lot easier to thread these haptics in that hollow bore needle outside the eye. Look at that, much, much easier. And look at the optic, it stays kind of parallel to the iris. You don't have the optic dipping down in the mid vitreous, which I think is important. Remember, sometimes you're going to have a high incidence or higher incidence of cystoid macrodinium or CME in these patients if you get vitreous trapped up in the haptics. And you don't want that. So I like this technique. That looks great. Push that in a little bit more. Now externalize that needle, and you got the two haptics outside the eye. Beautiful. Pull, pull, pull. Nice and gentle. Don't want to break these haptics. And then once you grab onto that haptic, do a little bit of cautery. And remember, don't just leave the nubbins of the flange there under the conjunctiva. You want to bury them within the sclera. That's going to give you a little bit better long-term stability. So now let's see the other side as well. Do a little bit of cautery. A little bit off the screen here. You still have a little bit of Irish prolapse, so certainly going to put some sutures in to seal up that incision. There's a little bit of cautery. And then now we can pass that in there. And then, get again, don't leave it under the conge. Get that the, the flange buried within the sclera. Iris back inside the eye, maybe put some myocol too, and now finishing up suturing that incision. What a nice outcome. Bet you the patient's very, very happy here. That looks fantastic. A little bit of iris peaking there, but a beautiful post-op result. Great job. And remember, check out retinarounds.com. Come in March 2025. Plus, of course, the number one podcast in all of ophthalmology is the Cataract Coach Podcast.